my vein. While the running one is in my Oh, it's in my veins. Oh, I said it's in my veins. It's in my veins. It's in my veins. It's in my veins. And while the blood is running warm. Oh, it's in my veins. Oh, it's in my veins. Well, it is in my veins. Lord, it's in my veins. Yes, it's in my veins. Lord, it's in my veins. And while the blood is running warm, it's in my vein. Oh, it's in my vein. Well, I'm going to pray just a little over here. And I'm going to pray just a little over there. And while the blood is running warm, it's in my vein. Hey, it's in my vein. Well, I'm going to sing just a little over here. Yes, I said, and I'm going to sing a little over there. And while the blood is running warm, it's in my vein. Hey, it's in my vein. Well, I'm going to shout just a little over here. Hey, and I'm going to shout a little over there. And while the blood is running warm, it's in my vein. Hey, it's in my, oh, I said it's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein, Lord, it's in my vein. And while the blood is running warm, said it's in my vein, hey, it's in my vein. Now Jordan's river is chilly and cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. And while the blood is running yes, it's in my vein. Hey, it's in my, oh, I said it's in my vein. It's in my vein. Lord, it's in my vein. It's in my vein. And while the blood is running warm, and while the blood is running warm, hey, you keep your hands in God's hand. Hey, and while the blood, blood is running warm, yes, I say, you keep your hands in God's hand. Hey, and you fight on, oh, you fight on. Now, if your brother oh, treats you wrong, hey, you take it to your brother and God alone. And you say, brother, you treated me wrong. Hey, and you fight on. Yes, and you fight. Hey, and I say, now, if your preacher treats you wrong, you take it to your preacher and God alone. And you say, preacher, I yes, and you fight on. I yes, and you fight on. Oh, I say, no, you fight on and on. You fight on and on. You fight on and on. You fight on. You put your hand in God's hand. You put your hand in God's hand. And while the woo, just keep your Keep your hands in God's hands. And you find on. Oh, you find on. Y'all say amen. Thank you, Brother Alvin. Amen. He know why. <laughs> Ain't God good. That's for y'all prayers this morning. I'm, I need your prayers. I Having breathing issues this morning. I should have just saved all my energy for the word. Uh, but uh, y'all pray for me. And we'll see how what the Lord says. Amen. If you have not had an opportunity to speak to somebody today, we just ask you to look at them and say, hey. Hey, now. What pretty baby you got sitting there? Who baby is that? (laughs) 
Amen. The theme of our homecoming this year is Messy Grace. Uh, our theme for this year has been Amazing Grace. The theme for homecoming is Messy Grace. Because the fact is, all of us have some messy in our lives somewhere. But ain't it good to know that God straightens out messes. Uh, our speaker this year is a, a young man named Dr. Mark Thompson. He's an excellent speaker. Uh, I was talking to him this week uh, concerning him coming. He is excited to come. He, he can't wait to get here and give us a word. <clears throat> And he was concerned about his style of dress. He said, now, if you want me to, to, to dress the regular suits, I can do that. He said, but I usually don't. I kind of wear just a collar and, and kind of a, I said, Metro really don't care. We just want you clean. Amen. Amen. Don't, <laughs> don't come stanking, but we don't. <clears throat> we don't you know, do we, we much more care about what the words you're going to give us and what God can do through us. Amen. We also have a special guest ministry uh, coming the group, Power. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they are powerful. We also have a group coming from, from Arizona, um, five or six young men called Brothers with Soul. <laughs> yeah, amen. So I'm excited. On Friday night, we will have um, preaching, prayer, and praises. And as you know, on Friday night, we, we, we do have a lot of praying on Friday night, a lot of preaching, a lot of praising God. Um, and we will be anointing people with oil, of, asking God to heal them of their sicknesses. We did it last year. And, uh, you know, we, we're not scared of what the Bible says. We don't believe in hocus pocus, but we believe everything the Bible says. Amen. And so we'll be doing, on Saturday morning, uh, we are the, we've asked the deacon and the deacon's wives to uh, collaborate for our prayer breakfast. And boy... Boy, what have I done? Boy, brother, brother Rupert, boy, he got some plan for y'all. Who we? Who we? I can't wait. Amen. On Saturday evening, um, and of course, Brother Thompson will give us a, a short word that morning. On, on Saturday evening, we have our concert with Power and Brothers with Soul and uh, 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 L.A. Mass and just several others we're excited about. Y'all know we love L.A. Mass around here. We're excited. Um, amen. I, I, wish I, could, I wish I could call for a reunion, or get, a, get, get a little redeemed and blessed here, but we'll see. Uh, amen. We just. <laughs> oh, oh, oh the, the diva has spoken. Oh, yes, and just you guys, go and give a hand to, give a hand to, um, to Belinda and Devon. They will soon be. Uh, amen. <laughs> Joined in wedded bliss. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you are not in a bill group yet, how many, uh, amen, uh, how many of you have been going to your bill group? Many, uh, amen. If you don't have a bill group, please see me. We need you to be able to take care of one another. Amen. Amen. And if, and if, if you need a bill group, Brother Alvin would be glad to have you in his group. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Let's do this. God, we bless you right now because you are good. Hallelujah. And your mercy endures forever. You are our shade by day and our moon by night, God. You are the answer to every question. We need to trust you enough to obey you. And so we ask when you give us this word on this morning, that the minds and hearts will be ready to receive it. God, we thank you this morning. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The series we're in now is called Overcoming Sin. Overcoming Sin. Augustine said, <clears throat> sin comes 
when we take a perfectly natural desire or longing or ambition and try desperately to fulfill it without God. Not only is it sin, it is a perverse distortion of the image of the creator in us. All these good things and all our security are rightly found only and completely in him. A little Christian girl was asked, were you a sinner? The little girl said, yes. I was asked, are you still a sinner? The little girl said, yes. Then what real changes have taken place in your life? The little girl squinched up her eyes. And she said, the best way I can explain it, it is that I used to be a sinner running after sin. But now, I'm a sinner running away from sin. The fact is, all of us have something we are dealing with. And we have to learn how to, instead of run toward our sin, run away from it. Before I continue, I would like to thank Brother Matt and Brother Devin, Brother Devin comes to our 8 o'clock service. You see how wonderfully light it is up here. <laughs> On Saturday, they came and put up new lights for us. Y'all give them a hand. Amen. We are thankful. Today, we are continuing our teachings on overcoming sin. Sin is the reason either directly or indirectly for every problem, issue, struggle, heartache, or trouble that you have in any area of your life. On last week, we discussed the first part of overcoming sin, which is to count yourselves or consider yourselves. This is the idea of making sure our attitudes are controlled by who God says we are, as opposed to any other definition of ourselves. After a person is baptized in water for the remission of their sins into Jesus Christ, the Bible says they are new creatures, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The Bible says they are free from the slavery and bondage of sin. Romans 6, 1 through 19. But before baptism, a person is called lost in sin, away from God, Ephesians 3, and destined to experience what the Bible calls hell or the second death, Revelation 21, verse 8. Sin is not the expected norm for a Christian. The captain of a ship doesn't say, when the ship sinks, this is what you do. He says, in the event of an emergency, see, for the Christian, we should have the attitude that if we get into trouble, it's not because we anticipate uh, doing wrong because we always do wrong, but it's because an emergency has happened, and we need something to help us when that emergency happened. Sin is any time something uh, is used in a way different than its intended purpose. That's sin. How many of you have ever seen a hammer? Can someone just shout out? The purpose of a hammer. Hit nails, take out nails. Well, second question. Second question. Has anybody uh, ever...
taking a hammer and bust somebody upside the head with it. <laughs> well, oh, Jesus. As you see, a hammer can be used for something other than its purpose. But that is not the hammer's intended purpose. Anytime a person uses a hammer to bust somebody out upside the head, they are using it in a way counter to its purpose. God creates us as humans with a purpose, and in Christ, he recreates us with purpose. Anytime you take that created vessel of God and use it counter to the creator's intended purpose, it's called sin. Therefore, in verse 11, Paul says, or so, or, or consequently, or because you have been saved, this conjunction here introduces the logical resort, result from preaching the gospel when a person is baptized. He says, therefore, this is what happens. Paul is saying, in essence, don't just after you have been baptized, and because now you know stuff, because in verse 1 through 11, the main verb was to know. Just because you know stuff now, Paul says, that's not enough. It's not enough just to know stuff. It's not enough just to have information about stuff. It's not enough just to go to the classroom of the word and then leave from the classroom of the word and not apply what the word has said or what you have become in your life. It's not enough. It's not enough just to, to come to church and, and, and say amen to the word or, or to say hallelujah during the song and then leave uh, the comforts of the walls of the church and go out and not live like what you... It's not enough. It's not enough to be baptized into Jesus Christ and, and to, to walk around with the label Christian on you and not live the sanctified life. It's not enough. It's not enough to be made holy and not live holy. It ain't enough. It's not enough to learn about walking in submission to God and walk out and the only thing you submit to is your own emotions and feelings. It's not enough. It's not enough to have this intellectual understanding of the faith and, and be assured in the doctrine of the faith and yet you don't do jack. It ain't enough. So he says, therefore, because of the fact, this truth, that in your spiritual bank account, you are now considered a dead to sin and alive in Christ. He says, that is why sin cannot continually exert a power over you. Can, can I just say something right quick? When you find yourself thinking, I ain't and I can't. It's time to fix your attitude because you won't. See, that's the reason in verse 11, the apostle says, consider yourself. Consider yourself or have the attitude or remind yourself that this is what you are in God. I can't stay on this too long, but I, I do want to emphasize this one more time. When you came to Jesus... The Bible says when you in faith turned away from sin, were baptized in water for the remission of sins, the Bible says you became dead to sin. Somebody shout dead. Which means you now lack the ability to respond to the stimulus of sin. The problem is the devil is a good liar. And what he does is he comes to you and he says, well, Brent, do you remember how back in the day, and Brent said, well, you know, yes, I do. I do remember. Well, that's what the devil does to us as believers. He makes us remember. Glory to God. 
So now instead of us walking the new life, we walk the life we were supposed to have forgotten that we're not dead to. And we're supposed to be alive. Somebody say alive. Alive means you automatically respond to a stimulus. I need to do a quick experiment. And it got to be quick. I need one volunteer. Some brave soul. Come on up here, Belinda. Come. Some brave soul. Don't run too fast. Amen. I know you got, you all brand new now. Because amen. Lord has lifted her up. Somebody give her. Amen. Somebody say, get her. Y'all already know. Praise the Lord. I want you to say, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pinch you. All right. Did you feel that? Yes. Why? Because I'm, I'm alive. Okay. If you were dead. Could you have felt that? No. All right. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slap you. <laughs> Did you see how quickly she responded to the stimulus? Y'all give her a hand. The Bible says you're dead to sin but alive to God. That means there ought to be some, let me make up this preacher word, automaticity. Some automaticity. Yeah. <laughs> Spell it, I-T. Uh, some, automatic, <laughs> some automaticity to how you respond to God. That you don't have to think about responding to God. You respond to God because he's what you're alive to. And so that's the reason the Bible says in verse 11 from last week, uh, consider yourself. Consider yourself. Now, I was going to give you all a, a book of Romans, but I don't have time. I'll get to you next week. I, I will. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's what Alvin was trying to help me do. He was trying to get me on time, but bless his heart. Anyway, uh, that's what he says. So you also should consider yourself. Somebody said consider yourself to be dead. So the next time you're struggling with sin, don't have the devil's narrative. You know, this is really hard. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's the wrong narrative. You start struggling with sin. Say, you know what? I'm dead to this. I need to repent. I got to change my mind about this stuff. See, you change your attitude, you change your actions. Today, our, our message is control yourself. Somebody say control yourself. Control yourself. Amen. Yeah, I put that up there because that's me all day. Those chocolate chips be tall calling me. Amen. Like they know my name. Got my email address. I try to ignore them. They hit me up on a text. I, hey, glory to God. Yeah, I made him hit me on Facebook. Don't you, don't you miss me. Glory to God. And so what he says is do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. And this version says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body <clears throat> so that you obey it and its lust. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. He says, first, do resist sin as master. Resist sin as master. Do not let sin <clears throat> reign. Y'all forgive me, that's. Y'all that, that suffer with stuff, y'all know when you start having those bron bronchial and asthmatic stuff, stuff just start coming up. It's, amen. But it's better for it to come up than to stay down. So, Do not let sin reign. The Greek here is emphatic. The Greek reads, be not always allowing sin to reign. It's, it's, a, it's an imperative stated in the negative. Be not always allowing sin to reign. Sin in Romans 6 represents a moral principle or force which is personified here as an evil king or as a harsh slave master who constantly seeks to enslave and to rule those who are subject to its power. He says, do not let sin reign. Reign means to rule as a king. By implication, it means to have something that, that which you respond to automatically, something you don't argue with. Don't allow sin to reign. Don't allow sin to have authority. Don't allow sin to rule, to be in control, to be your master, to control you completely. But it's in the present imperative, meaning it's what they call a, a, a contemporaneous action, meaning it's action happening right now. So, so, so the, the, the command is don't, allow, don't be allowing sin. Don't be allowing sin. 
Because it, the, the English doesn't really have a present imperative in this way. Uh, don't be allowing sin to be ruling in your life. Meaning, don't have sin running the systems of your world. Don't let sin be your master, your king, your slave owner. It literally means start stopping. See, the fact is, here in the Romans letter, these Romans weren't stopping. They were continuing to sin. And so what, what the apostle says is start stopping. Because the book of Romans is a treatise on the grace of God. And when you talk about grace, people know the good thing about grace is you can't sin enough that grace can't cover it. So what they did was they made the illogical leap that therefore if I want more grace in Romans 5, I need to sin more. Because in order for me to get more grace, I need to have more sin. And since I want more grace, I'll sin more. And Paul said, no, no, that ain't true. If you look in your Bibles back up in Romans uh, chapter 5, the end of chapter 5, uh, verse number 18. So then as through one trespass there is condemnation for everyone, so also there, through one righteous act there is life-giving justification for everyone. For just as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so also through the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The law came along to multiply the trespass, but where sin increased, grace increased even more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through righteousness, resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And every time I read that, I make me want to shout. Whew, hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, you can't out sin God's grace. And, but since they knew that and understood that, that's the reason in chapter 6, verse 1, Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? God forbid, certainly not. Then he asked a rhetorical question. How shall we, who are dead to sin, live any longer therein? He says, what? Know you not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his Death, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that just like Christ was raised up by the, uh, by the power of God, even so we also should walk in a new life. He says you were remade to be brand new. Therefore, whatever you were doing back in the day that you want to brag about, you need to forget about. Because you're supposed to be brand new. And when your friends are asking you, why you acting brand new, tell them because I am. Can we go out and drink? No. I was expecting a louder no, brother. <laughs> that was like, no. <laughs> Here in Romans 6, Paul teaches that sin's reign has come to a complete and final end for the believer. It's over. Any of you ever broken up with somebody? Any of you, maybe you're the person who got broken up, but I don't know. But it, yeah, you know, just a person just won't let it go. And so you try to be nice. You know, it's not you, it's me. We're just in different places right now. The apostle says that's not how you deal with sin. You walk up to sin and say, yo, it's over. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> yeah, it's over. See, that's what, in baptism, that's what you're saying to sin. It's over. So whoever, whoever glory to God was calling you at 3 in the morning or whoever your little cut buddies were who, who like to do this and that, it's over. And I know we don't tell babes in Christ. We tell babes in Christ to ease out of sin. You don't ease out of sin. It's over. Are we all mad at me again? What? Word? What? I thought this was the easy part. Glory to God. This is the easy stuff. We're supposed to come. When we come to Jesus, it's over. Anger, over. I'm done with you. Jesus wasn't a wait a minute. Didn't it? Uh, all right. It's supposed to be over. Over. I, I don't roll like that. It's over. 
Lord, just keep me right here, Lord, right? Just. David understood that sin, like an evil tyrant, could reign over him. So he prayed to the Lord to keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin. Psalm 19.13. Don't let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright and I shall be innocent from this great transgression. Same idea, even though it's Hebrewism, let them not rule over me. Let them not con control me. You notice how sin is constantly personified as active, as an active master. See, a lot of us think, well, can I help you all just a little bit? A, a lot of us think that, well, all I have to do is not do stuff, and I'll be all right. We don't understand that sin is a passive and an aggressive hunter. Sin passively hunts like an ambush hunter. But that's depending on the prey. See, some of us, he know he just got to wait on us and we're going to walk by in a minute. Well, say amen if you can. Sin also is an aggressive hunter. He knows some of us just hide in the flock. So he knows he got to call some stuff so he can run you down. Sin will actively hunt you. You can't overcome sin playing with sin. Somebody ought to say amen up in here. Somebody ought to, I know somebody knows Jesus in here. Some, we got one church member, glory to God. We ought to understand that sin is not playing with us. Sin is playing with you like the lion is playing with the antelope. When he's running after you, he's not playing tag. He wants to get to you, steal, kill, destroy. He wants to devour. That's what sin is. We need to, and, and Gloria, can I, can I help you just a little bit? We got any folk in high school in here? Yeah, we do. Glory to God. We got a couple. We got a couple of high school folk. Let me tell you some high school folk. Right now, while you're on Front Street, you know, living that life, thinking don't nobody know, because your parents don't know, because you know your parents, your God. Uh, let me tell you something. The crap you're doing now, when you get my age, you're still paying for it. witness in here. I'm telling y'all, sin ain't playing with you. That's the reason, the, that's the reason Solomon said, remember, remember now thy creator. In the days of thy youth, remember now thy creator. Right now, yeah, all right. I, uh, I had him for a second, not ignoring me. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I love you anyway. Um, I plant the seed. You can dig it up later. Moses warned the Israelites in Numbers 33 and 55. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants, somebody say drive out, before you, then it shall come about that those whom you let remain of them will become as pricks in your eyes and as thorns in your sides. And they shall trouble you in the land in which you live. See, see there's a principle in dealing with sin where you got to drive some stuff out. You got to decide there's some stuff that I just got to get rid of it. As a matter of fact, I have to violently get rid of it. I can't give it a chance. I got to kick it and, and stomp it and, 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 and then spit on it when it's dead. That's right because I got to disrespect it too. I got to make sure I don't want to pick it up again. Hallelujah, somebody. You got to drive it out. You got to drive it out. So some of us, glory to God, some of us, there's a whole lot of stuff that you're listening to, glory to God, that's, that's keeping sin in your life. Yeah, you don't don't let don't make me look at your iTunes library. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you need to watch what you're watching. Amen. Power ain't gonna give you no power. <laughs> Around they're trying to save ghosts. <laughs> you need to get the Holy Ghost, glory to God. <laughs> So he says, <laughs> in your mortal body, the Bible says. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. 
this mortal body, mortal meaning that which can die, that which is subject to death, describes the, ch- the situation of changeability and mortality of the body. Our physical body is the land over which this king wants to rule. Our physical body is the plantation over which the slave master wants to rule. Instead of surrendering our bodies to our slave master, he says, surrender your bodies to Jesus. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You notice he said present your bodies? A, did you, say, you see he said present your bodies? A, you, did you see he said present your bodies? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Our body is God's temple, and he wants to use it for his glory. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. What? Know you not. I just love when the Bible does that. What? <laughs> know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Philippians 1, 20 and 21. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. Our bodies are supposed to be used for God's glory. Our bodies are God's tool, God's weapon. Next week, Romans uh, 6.13. God uses our bodies to carry out his will. God used a rod in Moses' hand to conquer Egypt. God used a sling in David's hand to defeat the Philistines. God used the mouth of Elijah to defeat Baal. God used the Apostle Paul's feet to carry forth the gospel all over the Roman world. God used John's eyes to see the visions in Revelation, his ears to hear God's message, and his fingers to write it down that we might look upon it and read. God wants to use our bodies. God does not want us to use our bodies for fornication. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 13, meat for the belly and the belly for meat. But God will destroy both it and them. Now your body is not for fornication but for the Lord. That's what God wants you. And the funny thing is we think we can use our body for anything we want to. The Bible says we will be judged according to the things done in our bodies. 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in our body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. God wants to preserve our bodies and the very God of peace. Sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul uh, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we do in our body is important. That's the reason the enemy always wants to dominate your body. That's the reason he wants to get your hand, use your hands to slap people. That's why he wants to use your mouth to curse out people. That's the reason he wants to use your feet to carry you into mischief. He wants to dominate your mortal bodies. And glory to God, the funny thing is, we understand this when it comes to fitness. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Some of y'all won't miss the gym. Trying to get it in. You look in the mirror and say, ooh, I don't look good. Let me go get it in. I can't miss it. And you know, you know, and you know those sideways things we do then? Then we start quoting scripture. You know I got to take care of God's temple. <laughs> now, glory to God, I'm not anti-fitness. I know the fitness industry has told us a lot of stuff, but I'm not anti-fitness. God, glory to God, I got to start hitting it hard myself. I was looking at myself, I looked at myself a year and a half ago. I'm like, boy, you look good. I looked at myself today. I said, boy, you look like a sausage. <laughs> I, said, I said, ooh, we. Look, what, what, what in the world? So I know I got, so I'm not, I'm not against it. But I know what the scripture says. The scripture says bodily exercise profits little, but godliness profits with all. See, see, you, you can't be so concerned about your, your flesh that you forget what God. See, God wants to own your body, not to so your body can be pretty, but he wants to own your body so it can give him glory, give him honor, and give him praise. Hallelujah. The fact is our bodies are gifts from God, and we should use them to his glory and his honor. Say amen if you can. Oh, can I talk to the fine folk in here? 
<laughs> Let me tell y'all something. God made you fine for his glory. You got to use your fine for the glory of God. See, some folks don't understand that. You know, you know they, they try to dumb down they pretty. If you fine, go on and be fine. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, you ain't going to be fine forever. Um, so while you find glory to God, go ahead and use your fine to, you say, that, that ain't scripture. Glory to God. Do you not know that had, what's his name, Mordecai? Had Mordecai never seen how fine Esther was, she would have never been put in a position to say, come on. But when he looked at us, how fine she was. See, you don't know what God is using, but the fact is God wants to use it. And if you find, give it to God. Hallelujah, somebody. Whatever you got. So God wants to dominate your body. He wants to be the one that tells your body what to do. See, you being fine is for God's glory, not for your fornication. Can I help out the pretty girls a second? Pretty girls, y'all need to quit. Uh, you know, you know, you know what? I, I ain't even going to say it. I almost said it like something like I was back on the street. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Glory to God. Cause, cause glory to God. I, sometimes I don't, want, I, don't, I don't understand pretty girls. I don't understand pretty girls. I, I understand girls that ain't as, as attractive because they kind of, you know, figure they backed into a corner. See all the players, see them, all the players looking away now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the reason players always try to, try to ugly up pretty girls. Okay, okay, well, uh, uh, do not let sin <laughs> control your mortal bodies. Don't let sin be in control of you. Because if you are beautiful, or whatever you are, use it to God's glory. If you're an athlete, God wants to use your athleticism for his glory. Don't be out there dunking in somebody else's name. Dunk in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when, and when you, glory to God, and when you get on the, and I just hate, I just, I know I'm on my soapbox a little bit, I got to get back. But, but if, when you get on the, on the mic, and you're thanking everybody but God, immediately slap yourself because you didn't give God the glory. Because everything we have is, is, is to God's glory. I say everything we have is to God's glory. So, so, so resist sin as master. But then reject sin's methods. The Bible says. <laughs> reject sin's methods. Verse number 11 again, verse number 12. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so that you obey it in its lusts. Obey this word hupakuo. Hupo. It's a Greek word which means under. It's a preposition which means under. Akuo means to hear. We get words like acoustics for the word akuo. The idea of obedience is listening as if you are submissive to. It's the same word that's used in Ephesians 6 1 where it says, Children, obey. Hoop akuo, your parents. Listen to your parents as one who is in submission. It's the same thing he uses of servants or slaves for masters. Listen, listen, Ephesians 6, 5, obey, Colossians 3, 20. The idea implicit in obey is to bow under the rule of the person speaking. Those of us who grew up like I grew up understand this. When my father or my mother would say, fate, the proper response wasn't, huh? <laughs> the proper response to go and see what they want me to do. I listen with the intent to do whatever is told. So what he says here is don't allow, don't let sin tell you what to do through your lust. This is also in the present tense. It speaks of having the habitual practice of constantly 
doing sinful things. See, most of our problem isn't that once a year we slip up and look at a porn site. That's not most of our problem. Our problem is we have a subscription. It's a part of what we habitually do. The problem with most of us, and it's really not a problem that someone cuts you off on the freeway and you curse them out in your car. That's really not most of our problem. Most of our problem is we curse at folk all the time. The problem with most of us isn't we got mad because we had something happen wrong to us. It's we always mad. Matter of fact, we're just looking for somebody to use to be mad at. See, the problem with, with the lust of the flesh is it becomes habitual. Habitual. What God is telling us here is don't allow sin to habituate your life where you obey it in its lust. This idea of leaning towards something that you are passionate about. I, I don't have time to say everything I, I wanted to say, but I, I do need to say some stuff. If you can turn to the back of your sheets, I do want to, I may talk about this other stuff next week, but when you talk about taking control, first of all, understand your attitude lets me know that I can. Somebody say I can. Oh, y'all don't believe it. Shout, I can. Oh, look at somebody else. Tell them you can. Tell them you can. See, that's what God teaches us. You can. You, you can. You, you don't have to. You can. Hallelujah. You, you don't have to. You can. You have power. Hallelujah. I want to empower you today. You have power to not do the wrong things that, that keep habitually plaguing your life. You have the power. How do you take control? First, you got to fight. Somebody say fight. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 4 says, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. The fact is you got to resist. You hear what I said? You got to struggle. See, those words tell me that sin ain't going to let you go just because you start crying. Hallelujah. You're in a fight. You got to be willing to get it in. Put up your dukes. Throw some blows. Hallelujah. You got to be ready to fight. Somebody say fight. Bible says submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can't bargain with the devil. You got to resist the devil. Say amen if you can. Psalm 119 9 through 11 says wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word, with my whole heart I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against you. And I do want to drop this in your spirit. If you don't have no word in you, you have no chance fighting the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to get the word in you. You can't repent right without the word in you. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You can't glory to God. You're not going to fight the devil in your strength, in your intellect. You got to get the word of God in you. Because if you get the word in you, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will take the word and whoop up on the devil with the sword of the spirit. Am I right about it? Get the word in you. But next, you got to make righteous behaviors automatic. You got to get in the habit of doing right. Yeah, yeah. Titus 2, verse number 7, in all things show yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility. Next, you have to take yourself. You got to take yourself out of harm's way. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Bad company, corrupt communications, corrupt good morals. Proverbs 6, 27, can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burned? And the tripped out thing about it, glory to God, is we, we put ourselves in harm's way and then wonder why we get shot. <laughs> glory to God, you can't hang out with gang bangers and then wonder why somebody drove by. Next, you have to prioritize the best. Prioritize the best. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Somebody shout first. 
and all these things. You got to prioritize your life. Hallelujah. Before you pay your bills, you need to, to glory to God, glory to God. You got to prioritize your life. Seek first the kingdom. Before you get your needs met, meet the kingdom's needs. You walk into the house and the kids are acting crazy and you feel like knocking them all upside the head with that hammer we were talking about before. But you don't meet your needs. God said, fathers, don't exasperate your kids. The Bible says, bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You can't walk around acting like a, a, a maniac because you're feeling bad. You have to pry towards the, prioritize the kingdom. You got to let go of what's holding you back. <sighs> Hallelujah. Isn't that what the Bible says? Paul says, I forget those things which are behind, and I press toward those things which are before. All that stuff in the past that you want to bring up, forget it. Who cares that you could cuss out folk back in the day? Well, you know, well, you know, back in the day, you can't think on me like me. Because I can't. Who cares? Forget all that stuff. Let go of that past stuff. You got to fix your self-talk. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Proverbs 4.23. Fix your self-talk. Quit having that narrative of the devil running around in your head. The Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these. Do you not notice that the Bible says you can control what you think about? And finally, you got to follow Jesus. Follow. The Bible says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. 1 Peter 2.21, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Matthew 6.24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We got to learn to follow Jesus. Did you hear what I said? I said we have to learn to follow Jesus. We got to learn how to follow Jesus. It seems like we follow everything but Jesus. We got to learn to follow Jesus. We shouldn't wear nothing Jesus wouldn't wear. We shouldn't say anything Jesus wouldn't say. Hallelujah. We got to learn how to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Wherever Jesus puts his foot, we need to put our foot. Am I right about it? Wherever Jesus puts his foot, that's where we need to put our foot. We need to follow the footsteps that got holes in them. Because, oh, glory to God, you remember they, they put a hole in his foot. We follow everybody else's footsteps. We got the footstep over here and, and a foot. But you need to put your foot, uh-huh, in Jesus' footsteps. Because as long as you put your foot in Jesus' footsteps, you will go where Jesus went. Glory to God. See, you can't get where Jesus went, if you don't go, where Jesus goes. So you got to put your foot every time in Jesus' come on, somebody. And you got to follow the footprints that got holes in it. Quit following the cute. I don't care how cute the other ones are. Get the bloody one. The one that has cross splinters on it. Get the one that's dusty like Jerusalem. You need to put your feet in Jesus' footsteps. Because I don't know about you, but I want to go where Jesus went. I ain't trying to go to hell. I'm trying to go to heaven. I don't know about y'all, but I want to go to heaven one day. I'm going to die one day. I know you don't think you're going to die, but I'm going to die. And I want to go to heaven. Jesus says, Jesus says, Je I want to go where Jesus is going. <laughs> Jesus says, you ain't going to tell me what Jesus says? Let not. Jesus. Do I got to preach it? Let not. Your heart be troubled. Your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Also believe. believe also in me. In my father's house. There are many. Talking about heaven, y'all. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go 
to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. For whither I go, you know. And well, Thomas said to them, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? You got to put your foot in Jesus. Because when you put your foot in Jesus' footprints, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father. But you want to get to heaven? You got to. I don't think we got nobody want to go to heaven up in here. <laughs> come on, stand to your feet. And if you want to get to go to heaven, come on, give God praise. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're struggling with sin right now. You got to repent. You got to turn from it. Oh, amen. You got to decide. I'm coming to Jesus. I'm coming to Jesus. And I don't care what nobody say. To Jesus I will go. Come on right now and sing the song of encouragement. Towards me, your loving kindness towards me, oh, your tender mercy I see, oh, day after day after day, forever faithful towards me, oh. You are always providing for me. Oh, great is your mercy towards me. Oh, great is your great is your grace. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving. Towards me, oh yes, you are always from my 